Hello, and welcome to Morning Manna. My name is Ron, and over the last several weeks, we have been going through Hebrews chapter 11, which many call the Hall of Faith. And they do that because in this chapter, God is commending different Old Testament believers for their faith. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of the things that the Lord's commending them, commending them for in this in this chapter are things that I just read right past, to be quite honest with you. I didn't think much of them, but the Lord did. And it makes me wonder, what are the seemingly small things that we have been faithful in that the Lord is taking note of? They might seem small to us, but they're not to him. And so I think that's a good thing for us to consider and ponder. And so we're going to get into our passage. But before we do, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, Father, that you are uh, delighted by our faith, Lord. And we do place our faith in a great God. And we're thankful for you. And so we just pray that you would guide us through this passage and um, just help us to get the truths out of that. In your name we pray. Amen. So last week, we left off talking about Moses. And we're going to pick up there in Hebrews eleven twenty six. And it says he, and this is talking about Moses, he considered the, repro the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking forward to the reward. So again here, it's talking about Moses, and he's saying that he considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, which is kind of an interesting thing to compare because you typically don't look at a reproach, um, especially of Christ, since he wasn't even born yet. Um, the reproach of Christ being a greater wealth, but Moses did because he was looking toward the reward. And folks, that is so important for us today. There's a lot of rewards that we're going to receive here on earth and temporal blessings, but none of them will compare to the reward. And Jesus talks about it in the New Testament, and it's something for us to look forward to. And I believe it speaks of our inheritance in Christ. And that's, that's something great and something we need to be looking forward to. We'll kind of continue on down there. Hebrews eleven twenty seven by faith, and again, it's still talking about Moses. He left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the, un the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. So the first thing it kind of commends Moses for is that he wasn't afraid of the anger of the king. That reminds me of that passage in Proverbs where it says, the fear of man will prove to be a snare, but he who trusts in the Lord will be kept safe. We don't want to fear men, but we want to fear the Lord and put our trust in him. And then it goes on to say that when uh, Moses kept the Passover, he sprinkled the blood so that the firstborn might not touch, the, the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. You know, when the Lord told him, I want you to apply that blood over the doorpost, Moses did it by faith. And so too, that speaks of our putting our trust in Jesus as we trust in what he did on the cross for us, for our salvation. There's a trust thing there. There's a faith thing that's taking place there. And then we move on. It says, by faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land. But the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. So here we see, again, another picture of salvation. We've seen the movies. We all know when the, the parting of the Red Sea happens, they just cross right over it. But there was faith done there. That looked probably pretty scary when you have these walls of water on each side of you and you're crossing right through it. But they did it. And ultimately, it, it saved them. And the, the danger was obvious because it's the thing that took out the Egyptians. But the Israelites, they were putting their trust and their faith in the Lord. Continue on down. Hebrews 11.30, it says, By faith, 
The walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. So when the Israelites are now leaving Egypt and they're crossing over into the promised land, they have to deal with this great fortified city, Jericho. This great walled city that they have to take down. And the Lord tells Joshua and the nation of Israel, I'm going to give you this city. And what you're going to do is you're going to circle around that city for six days, once each day for those six days. And then on the seventh day, seven times. And then at the end of that seven times on the seventh day, you're going to give a shout. You're going to blow the trumpets and those walls will fall down flat. I think about when they're marching around just one of those days, or maybe even on the seventh day, if a few of those Israelites might have looked at it and said, I'm not sure how those walls are going to come down. I don't see how he's going to do it. And so too, for you and I, we might be having an obstacle in front of us where we say, I just, I don't see how the Lord can, can move in that. That seems like a walled, a fortified city that I just can't quite take down. But the Lord can do it. And he did it here. On the seventh day, they circled seven times. They gave a shout, blew the trumpets, or maybe vice versa in that order. And those walls fell down flat. And then on the other side of the coin, we see Rahab here. She's being commended because she put, she had given friendly welcome to the spies, it says. And in doing so, she's putting her faith in their God, in the Lord. And she saves not only herself, but she saves her household as well. A neat thing here. And Rahab's noted in the New Testament. We know that she's in Jesus's line um, exciting things. So I'll continue on down. Hebrews eleven thirty two, And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. So here we have a list of names in the Old Testament, and it, it throws out quite a few, and it tells of the great things that they've done. But I've just got to tell you, the one that jumps out at me the most, and the one that surprises me the most, is Samson. How did Samson make it into Hebrews 11? But there we have it right there. And I'm so glad the Lord records that because it speaks of his faithfulness ultimately. Samson did all these mighty acts, but he lived, as you read it and judge, um, a pretty carnal life. But yet we see him being commended for his faithfulness. And again, I just think it speaks of God's faithfulness. And it even says in 2 Timothy, it says, when we are faithless, God is faithful, for he cannot deny himself. And I'm just going to read this passage to you because it's one of my favorites in the Bible. And it's talking about right when he had um, uh, given himself over to Delilah. And she said in Judges 16, 20, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as, as, as other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. And the Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze shackles. And he ground at the mill in the prison. But, Judges 16, 22, but the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. I love that. To me, when we know that the Lord is still working, even in, in the midst of all that hard stuff that he was going through, we know that God's faithful, and he's faithful to you and me. So I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you.